Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hey everybody, what's up? How's it going? Hopefully, uh, hopefully your week and your month's off to a fantastic start. Now, um, today's episode is not going to be what how what what we've been doing for the last three years. I'm going to start interspersing these long form interviews with some bite sized smaller pieces of content that will be actionable. Now, here's the deal, right? So, like, you guys listen to the show, and uh, it's hours long. You know, an hour long. And there's lots of nuggets in there. And I think the problem that I, I get emails from you guys, which thanks very much. I read them all. I try to respond to them all. But the problem that 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 most people face, whether you've been in the business for one month, one year, or even sometimes 10 years, is the fact of, you know, you hear these strategies. You go, oh, that's great, but how do I implement them? Now, the problem, I think a problem in, in the industry is... Uh, is that uh, there's all these coaches out there, right? Now, coaching, there's a need for coaching. I don't want to say anything bad about, about some of these folks. They're, they're my friends. Um, but here's what I think coaching should be, okay? Coaching should be, uh, as a coach, I'm going to tell you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, Right? What, how, and when? Now, the problem is most of these coaches are not super up to date on marketing, right? So they don't, they, most of them can't tell you what to do. If you, and if they don't even know about it, they can't tell you how. And, uh, and they obviously can't tell you when. Now, and, and I'll tell you that last component, that when is extremely important because when you build your business, you know, you, you, there, there is a definite sequence into what you should build in, right? And how to do it. And too many times, you know, we have radio clients, for example, um, that, uh, that have been doing radio with us for, you know, a year and a half, two years. And, uh, and even though I spend time with these folks, one guy in particular, great guy, friend of mine, um, we spent lots of time together. You know, we've gone to conferences together. We've roomed together. And I, I finally broke down and said, dude, what? tell me about this pillar, this pillar, this pillar. And I was surprised to learn that even some of the most basic pillars that you guys should all have and start out with, he didn't have. I'm like, dude, hold on. You're doing the super, like, you know, cutting edge radio and television stuff, but you don't, you're not doing this. So anyhow, we, I said, stop, boom, we're, we're changing all that. Um, so I, I want to tell you guys something if you guys didn't know. Okay. And I'll be very transparent with you guys. Number one, I want to create the premier training company in the world of real estate, right? Not a coaching company. I don't want to do that. I'll, 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 I'll do calls with people in a group. <clears throat> I don't want to do that. I want to be the training company. And more than that, right, we, the stuff that we have built out f as uh, for you guys. And by the way, again, transparency, am I going to ask you guys to, to pay for some of these things? Yeah, I am, right? Because like radio, right? We'll do it. But, you know, and radio is something where you... It, it takes no energy from you, right? Which is brilliant. We all, once we have our basic pillars built out, we need to have some of the stuff running in the background. And that's so far, that's some of the stuff that we focused on radio, right? Uh, we have viral cast, which is the podcast thing. Uh, Scout media, we buy Facebook ads. Now today, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bore you with that stuff. Today, I want to tell you about Craig Proctor and Craig's story. Now, Craig will not come on this show. Um, and uh, I don't know, philosophically, whatever. I mean, he's, he, he is, he is uh, probably the only guy who said no, which is weird. But, you know, he's like, oh, dude, I'm by referral only or whatever. But whatever, dude. Um, but let me tell you, let me tell you his story. Because you guys can learn something from his story. So, and, and if you don't know, right, Craig, back in the day, became Remax's top guy in the world now in the world and he and he was only 29 years old so how did he get there how did he do that now for him he he had a rough time 
right? He started and he was really struggling for a few years. And finally, he got smart and implemented some systems to a tr- to attract clients and new customers, right? And fundamentally, at a high level, you know, he turned his business from a chase business. We talk about this all the time, right? Most people have chase businesses, right? You chase people down, right? You're like a lion on the African savanna, like boom, boom. I'm going to chase you down until I catch you or you just finally give up and uh, let me eat you. Um, so, and a good example, if you don't really, if that analogy didn't stick with you, um, ch- ch- the the quintessential chase business is stockbrokers. Stockbrokers, you they get your phone number, they're gonna they will I mean dude, I get calls and I'm a nice guy. When people call me and they're and they're cold call me, um Yeah, well let me I'll talk about this for a second, because this bothers me. Okay. And I and I, I want to stay on point here. But so stockbrokers, they get my information, they call me, hey Toby, let me pitch you this new hot stock, blah blah blah. I'll listen to them um and I'll let them give me their pitch. I'll say, Hey, no thanks, or like tell me more. Now now, you guys, in terms of real estate, most of you guys, 99% of you guys are have chase businesses, right? You find a, a new phone number, you get a, a name and number, a quote unquote lead, and you just chase them down. Um, not great, right? You want, you want to build, we all want to build an attraction company, attraction business where we are so good at what we do. Our offer is so phenomenal that people call us. Um, and by the way, by the way, you know, we are all prospectors and you know what, what I'd ask you to do when people call you up, whether that's the solar company, uh, whether that's one of my VAs calling you or whatever, you know what, listen to the person's pitch. Um, uh, I, I find it so surprising that, that we don't, we want people to extend us the courtesy of listening to our pitch when we call in. Um, however, when somebody calls you, you hang up on them. I'm not saying you in particular, but that's something, but a lot of you do. And it's very surprising to me. I'll, 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 I'll get a report, a daily report from my VA and they'll like, she'll be like, Oh, you know, I called a hundred people, eight of them straight up, hang up, hung up on me. I'm like, really? Like that's anyhow. So let's get back to Craig. Okay. So Craig again, struggling. And in fact, Craig, when he first started, he languished, right? He was surviving off the scraps that other agents would throw him. He was frustrated and he felt pain, right? It's painful not being able to pay your bills, especially when you're in a market where you're like, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, right? I'm I'm, I'm literally duct taping my car together uh, while, you know, the guy who's is operating in my own farm, uh, you know, he's he's driving a brand new whatever and, and going out to fancy restaurants. Okay, so the guy's struggling. He's living off scraps. Now, this pain that he was feeling combined with the fact that his marketing was costing him way more than he was making. I mean, he wanted to quit. And, and I used to, I don't, I don't much anymore, but I used to, that's one of the questions I used to ask my, my, my guests. Was there ever a time where it got so hard that you wanted to quit? 99.5% of the time, people will say yes. And, and, you know, going back to Craig and for you, if, you know, if, if you are in that position right now of going, God, it's so tough, right? There's so much competition. Uh, I feel like quitting. Don't quit. The, if you are struggling, uh, just like Craig, um, you're probably making the same mistake that 99% of all beginners make. And if you look around, if you're honest with, with yourself, you, what you're going to see is that you're doing the same exact stinking thing that everybody else is. And if everybody looks the same, smells the same, sounds the same, it's impossible for you to get the attention, let alone business, of, of those potential clients, of those prospects. And this market, look, this real estate market is, you know what, man, it can be cutthroat. 100%. And the other thing, the other thing, especially that we're all struggling with in a hot market, and the market is hot right now, and that's why if you look my last episode, my last episode, if you, if you are not listening to these sequentially, I talked about the state of affairs, the state of the market. You know, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing some issues, some problems in the luxury market, which will, uh, at some point, uh, in the near future, in the near, you know, uh, 18 months at the latest, it's going to affect the lower end. Okay, I don't want to get off track. So you probably look the same 
as everybody else. You're probably doing the same thing as everybody else. Now, I know there's security in the pack. Well, Jimmy and Julie's doing that, so yeah, I guess I should too. Um, you got to look different. Okay, we'll get there. So if you look the same, if, you, if you're running Facebook ads, which you're probably not, and if you are, you're probably not doing it right, uh, in which case you should talk to us about Scout, anyhow. But if, you're, if you look the same, act the same, smell the same, that is a blueprint for failure. That is a blueprint for financial disaster. And I have to tell you, this, unfortunately, is all too common. And not only in this industry, in, in, in almost all industries, whether you know, you're a chiropractor, you're, you're an attorney, whatever. Um, so what do you do? And I, these are just going to be simple bullet print. I'm not going deep in these at all, but I just want to give you some bullet prints, bullet points of a blueprint for you to think about. Okay, so one, first bullet point, number one, the one reason. And this is this is about advertising. Okay, this is this this these bullet points are specifically about advertising, because you know all the other stuff, cold calling. You know, you're gonna if you can. Here's where you start, right? And and we talk about this on about radio a lot. We have a very specific demographic that we target. Now, and in a lot of ways, we're farming a demographic. And when you think about farming, you can farm a geography, but you can also farm a demographic. Now. Unlike farming a geography, when you farm a demographic and you really, really very specifically think about, okay, who am I trying to reach, right? How, what gender are they? How old are they? How much do they make? What things do they do for fun? There's very much uh, homogeny in that, right? A 45-year-old guy making $300,000 a year is probably going to do stuff very similar and care about very similar things as the next guy who is 45 year old uh, making 300k so advertising think about your number bulletproof number one identify your ideal client right avatar however you want to say that who do you want to reach now again advertising the only reason to advertise, whether that's on radio, whether that's with Facebook ads, whether that's on TV, whether you get crazy and you try to do a billboard, which which um, even though that sounds hokey, um, if you don't know what uh, uh, a guy like Jeff Cook is doing out in Charleston, uh, he's making it work. He's also coupling that with radio. But but the only reason to advertise is to have prospects call you. That's it. Right. Again, we want to build an attraction business, not a chase business. Anything doing advertising, anything else is a waste of time. It's a waste of money and you should not attempt it. Right. I I, I, people call me up and uh, to talk about radio and they tell me they've never done radio and they tell me things like, oh, it takes some time to work. It doesn't. You you are you are mistaking the point uh, or, or or. confusing what you've learned about about buying a uh, a, a, a bus stop bench at, with impressions and branding rather than advertising. Now, let me, just, let me tell you something really, really quickly. And I, uh, hopefully this one thing, because this is something that will, will it'll, it'll trip you up when it, when it comes to advertising, when it comes to marketing, right? There's a difference between advertising and marketing. And here's the here's a very easy way to think about it. And this is a very complicated uh, topic. But advertising, and I'll give you some examples. But advertising is when you make an offer. Marketing is when you are making a statement. Okay. Again, this is a very simplistic way to explain this. And uh, here's the example: If BMW runs an ad, and uh, they're and they're they're talking about their brand new five twenty eight, whatever, right? Here's check you know look at our brand new 528. It's so luxurious. Um, it's 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 a feat of German engineering. Um, uh, there's no other car like it. That's marketing. Now they could easily turn that spot into an advertising piece if they say, look at our 528. Beautiful German engineering unprecedented luxury lease it now for 328 or uh, lease it now for 199 dollars a month they just made you an offer they they made a statement check out our gorgeous car now buy it right lease it 
take action. That is the difference between marketing and advertising. So the only reason that I will do any advertising, that you will do any advertising, is to get your prospect to pick up the phone and call you. Not look you up on the internet, right? Not learn more about you. Pick up the phone and call you and go, yes, I want to, I want to take you up. I want that 528 for 199 bucks a month. Now, and, and again, no, that's all people care about. Right? We'll get into what's in it for me, but nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about your image. Nobody cares about your, what you stand for. Nobody cares if you say, oh, you know, sell your house with me and I'll donate 5% of the proceeds to you know, starving kids in Africa. Right. Sell your house with me and I'm going to I'm going to I promise that I'm going to buy a hundred coats for the cold Minnesota winter. Right. For these kids. Honestly, it's nice. Nobody cares. All right. Advertising. We want to build an attraction business. It is only to get the phone call. Okay, two. Step two. Bullet point two. And I talked about this in the last episode. Replace your image ads with unique selling proposition ads. Okay, again, going back to that making a statement, marketing, or advertising. So, so the second breakthrough in this whole piece when you think about marketing and advertising yourself is to right now, if you are running anywhere in the world, online, offline, you write mailers with image ads, replace those with highly effective direct response style ads where the only objective is get to the potential customer to contact you. We want to create desire to contact us by implementing, again, our unique selling proposition within the ads. If you can have a unique selling proposition for your client, for your market, for your whatever, that is going to set you apart. Again, right? 99% of the problem that people have when they're struggling is they look and sound like everybody else. Okay. Now, and again, like with radio, for example, and, and ev- everything that we do is starts with number one, a unique selling proposition. What makes you different? Now, I'm not going to tell you, we have some very distinct programs or not programs, uh, 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 propositions that we use for our clients. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to broadcast them out here, but for you, what's yours, right? Don't use ours, use yours. And that's, again, that's, I'm not keeping anything from you guys. I just don't want to, I just don't want to tell you all ours. And then I have a billion people, right, doing <laughs> what we're doing on their own and they're completely fouling it up. All right, so three. So you're going to offer, you're going to have this unique selling proposition and you're going to offer the prospect a lead magnet that they want, right? Is it, 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 if this is a revelation to you, congratulations. If you know about this but are not doing it, well, then it should be a, a revelation. Um, so now, and I can tell you, like, in the real estate world, you guys, real estate agents are terrible marketers. That's it. I don't care if you're doing 300 deals, 400 deals, 500 deals. Typically, you are a not you, I shouldn't say you listening, but typically your competitors are terrible marketers. And that get, that's an opportunity, right? That's an opportunity for you to get out and stand out and, and, and beat them down by just r- creating a compelling USP, unique selling proposition. And this is going to be something that your prospects are what they want, what they're looking for, and then drive them to a landing page, a lead magnet, right? Because it, and it, it, and, I have had so many conversations with people. I'll tell them the flow, right? The sales funnel that we use. And, and the thing that they'll say, well, you know, the, the, the question that I'll, they'll ask me, right? They'll, they'll go, oh, well, shouldn't I just send them to my, to my, my website? And I'm like, no, no, you shouldn't send them to the website. You don't want to give them choice. You want to say, hey, Again, going using that, that 528 analogy. Here, get this 528. It's 199 a month. You do not, when, when, if, they, if, you, if you were actually doing that, if you were BMW, you send them a, you know, show them a lead magnet, a landing page. You don't want to tell them uh, all, you don't want to get back into how luxury it is. You want to just go, hey, dude, here's the offer. It's 199. Click here. Give me your credit card number. Give me your bank information. That's it. So, so bullet point three. Offer the prospects a USP, drive them to a lead magnet or landing page, spout, splash page, however you want to say it. Four, and this is this is the th- the th- and, and let me let me tell you this right, um, people 
operate, people buy on emotion, not logic. And this, 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 this trumps, uh, trumps, uh, trips a lot of people up, right? They're like, oh, logically, Toby, you know, here I do this, this, and this, and this, uh, and that's why I'm better than, than Julie or Jimmy. And, that's, and you can make a logical case for that. But Julie or Jimmy is going to beat you down at that listing presentation because it, or if they can make an emotional argument. And, and, you know, on a, and I'll, I will, I'll tell you something. I won't explain this just because it's outside of the, the scope of what we're doing in today's episode. But, you know, I see everything in terms of campaigns. And many times what we'll try to do in a campaign, whether it's, whether, whether it's an, uh, an offline campaign or an online campaign, to, to exploit this emotion piece, typically we'll, our th- three-part campaigns go like this. Again, three-part campaign. Gain, that's the first message. Gain, logic, and fear. Gain is the, we, we, we tell them why they should hire us or hire you in, in gain, right? This is what you're going to get out of it. Two, logic. And again, we, all this can be based on the foundation of our USB. Gain, logic, fear. Okay. So, you know, what I said earlier um, is, again, people don't care. Well, let me tell you why the emotion works. Because everybody is in the WIIFM world. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Why should I call you, right? Many small businesses, in real estate or not, they make the mistake of advertising what they sell, right? Or the service they provide. But the secret to getting predictable, high response from your ads is connect with that prospect's emotional hot buttons, right? Gain. And, if we, and then if we can't get them on the gain, we'll get into logic. Hey, this is why you should logically call Toby. And then if we can't get them there, we get into fear. Here's what's going to happen if you don't call Toby, right? So all on Operate on the emotional hot buttons, and uh, geez, I could keep going on and on because this 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 notion of uh, or, or this pattern, this 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 funnel, you know, uh, 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 gain logic fear. You can use that in your campaigns. You can you can and should use that. Uh, in in how you do your listing presentations. Now, I'll tell you again, if I go back to the beginning of of this episode, what I told you was, right, I want to create the premier place, training, portal, whatever, for the world of real estate. And and I'm, uh, you know, it's funny, last week, I took my 13-year-old daughter, we went down to the library. We got a, we got a little conference room there, and I shot some videos. I'm shooting some some bite sized videos of all this stuff. Right? How what what does that series look like for your listing presentation? Right? Um, anyhow, I'm not. I haven't released it yet, but uh, we're, we are doing some videos um, uh, for you guys. So that's it. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, go to the site, um, get on my list. I share stuff on my list that I don't share anywhere else. Um, we have a new, uh, a new sponsor uh, coming out. So, so, uh, and this, this sponsor is something I think you guys should definitely look at. I'm not going to uh, plug them right now. Um, follow me on uh, Twitter uh, at Super Agents Live, and that's where I post all the latest episodes. Uh, you know, if you don't, if you know, hopefully you've subscribed to the show. Hopefully you have gone to iTunes, subscribe, so whenever we drop a new episode, it pops up into your phone. If you haven't, go subscribe to the show, and if you like it, uh, uh, you know what I'd love? Love, love, love. Give us a rating and review. Just, you know, it's pretty easy. It shouldn't take a whole lot of time, and it really helps the show. All right, that's it. Um, uh, You know what I'm going to close with? I'm going to close with this. I'm recording this in the middle of September, and I want you guys to really, really, really... uh, Take this to heart, what I'm about to, 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 to share. And some of you guys, what I'm about to share, you guys know this intuitively, instinctively you know this, but this, it's something that you guys should be, it should be on the top of your mind. Okay. We are, uh, I'm recording this, September 12th, 2016. September 12th. Now, if we think about this, right, September 12th, we have 30 days to October 12th. Uh, we have 
uh, uh, 45 days to October 27th and what happens after October 27th, right? It's Halloween. And then we very quickly, get, we're, I mean, we're in the holidays, right? Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Christmas, and then all of a sudden we're into the new year. We're into 2017, and in this year we're going to have a new president. If, who knows if that's going to be Trump or Clinton, um, but the world is going to look different. Um, and uh, and just it's just historically, right, when, when we think about building our business, you know, we can market and advertise, you know, in the first of the year, and that's great. But most people are, are one, thinking about the, all their New Year's resolutions and what they're going to do and how they're going to better themselves and, you know, what their life's going to look like uh, over the next 12 months. Um, February, people are thinking, now thinking about taxes. So you guys have right now 30 to 45 days that are open. And what you do in the next 30 to 45 days will shape your business, will carry your business into the new year and potentially into next spring. So, so really, guys, take that away. Um, uh, you guys have 30 to 45 days. So even if, even if, if you're doing fantastic, good. Don't rest, right? Get up on that horse. Get up early every morning and, and go hit it. And I'll tell you, and you guys know if you've listened to the show, right? I get up at 4, 4.30. And, and it's funny. If you do the math, right? Let's say that I get up at 4. And normally, I'll get up at 4 and I'll start messing with my emails, even though a lot of people tell you that's what you shouldn't do. Um, but if I get up at 4 and let's say I get to work at five or actually start working at five. Um, I have four hours till nine o'clock. And a lot of you guys don't start work till nine, right? I've already worked half a day by the time you walk in the office. By the time 12 o'clock hits, I've already worked seven hours. I've already, by the time you guys are cracking your, 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 you know, your sandwich bag open, I've already worked a full day. So for you, again, knowing that we have 30 to 45 days to shape our, the rest of the year in terms of our business, um, you know, maybe try to get up a, an hour earlier, 30 minutes earlier, put a little bit more into it. All right, that's it. I uh, hope you guys like it. Um, if you are liking these, you know, small kind of different style modules that uh, I've been putting out, send me an email. Let me know. I'll do more of them. All right. See you guys. Let's go. 